obviously offer uh, Zoom. Uh, they also offer, uh, there's a few other things I like about it. Also, it, it lets you know how much bandwidth you're getting when you're doing it, which is a little failing of view streams. Um, and also, uh, uh, for those of you out there uh, that are interested, uh, I will be releasing my own app that I've written here in the next, uh, like about a month more to go. And I'm, I have to get my patent application in. And then once I do that, I'll be able to release my app. And my app will include all the features and all the shortcomings, or not the shortcomings, but it will include all improvements to the shortcomings that I've found in all the other live stream companies that are offering it. And I will be offering it open source and also with unlimited space on my web servers. So you will actually be able to live stream through my web servers, as well as post your videos. And um, the cost is incredibly cheap, so it's not a problem. And also, uh, the IP number is in Iceland. So if you're experiencing any copyright issues, Iceland is a place to be because uh, they don't recognize copyright law in other countries. So if your video or whatever happens to get subpoenaed, which we'll be talking about here in a little bit, uh, about security culture, um, but then you don't have, that's one thing with police or any kind of law enforcement, CIA, doesn't matter who it is, they will not be able to harass you or seize your, your work. Um, will your app decrease the cost of live streaming? It seems like... It'll make it free. Yeah, because like 300 it kind of like makes me not want to live stream. Well, I'm talking about 300, that's kind of like what it... I, I cover anywhere from two to five events a week. Yeah. Right? And I'm just like talking about, like, just the economic cost. It doesn't mean that doesn't mean that's three hundred dollars out of your pocket, yeah. right? Because if I was actually going to figure the actual cost of it, right, it would be a lot more. Right. So don't worry about the cost so much. Okay. Pretty much it's all free. It's a matter of you devoting all energy and time to it. Okay. Okay. And that's what I, generally I talk about. I say three hundred dollars because that's about for average person that's about how much energy and time you're going to have to put into it. I'm going to put a dollar. Okay. Um, generally, I don't work in that world. As far as money is concerned, I try not to live by money as much as possible. It's not as important to me as, as trying to get you guys involved, which is way more important. Right? Ah, I know. I, I hate to say myself on camera. Uh, you know, I mean, that's another thing about live streaming is that I don't have to. I'm not really in the pointing camera at myself. This is like one of the few times that I actually allow my picture to go out there over live stream. Yeah. But I don't mind. It's, I'm just I'm kidding. Okay, now, um, now that you have all the tools that are, in, that are available to you, okay. um, and you should be able to register on a Ustream account, uh, and you have all those tools available to you, now you're ready for the next part of our class, uh, which we're going to be discovering, discussing uh, what sets live stream apart from other media, such as video, uh, and there's quite a few other, and, and radio and television, um, and mainly the differences between being a, a, a professional journalist and being a citizen journalist. Uh, because I get this feeling, uh, well, I, get, I just know from journalistic and just reading uh, the stuff that I've read and seeing the stuff that I've seen that a lot of journalists, uh, journalism is under fire, economic fire, because of the internet. Uh, it's hard for people, people to make a living being journalists nowadays. It's almost impossible to find a job being a journalist, a uh, paying job. And uh, what I would recommend to journalists is to keep keep it up with your journalism, but now you have this wonderful new, new technology that allows you to take your camera anywhere. And uh, when I go out, and I know that a lot of media people follow my tweets um, about events, and I've actually seen them show up right after I tweeted something. And when they come out, that now I actually see them starting to come out with their smartphones, because you know a smartphone. The reason why it's so yeah. cool is that it's a ubiquitous piece of technology, mm -hmm. and it's available everywhere. And, and you can hook up to a, you know, the 4G, it's, it's all over the country, all over the world, and anybody can do it. And now it's really nice to see the media professionals out there actually live streaming as well. You know, I don't consider that to be, that's a compliment to me when I see them out there, right? And, uh, and I know they're trying to do their job of what they're trying to do. But um, if I thought that I've been involved in communications and journalism for 40 years, over 40 years, and I, everything you could possibly think of that goes with that, including knowing how to operate and repair all the hardware that goes with it. And I've worked in printing presses as big as this room and been able to take them apart and put them back together again. And, uh, and I'm not a, a mechanical wizard by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So, but I've always made it a point to learn how things work. 
Um, and I think it's important that people learn that they're on live stream. Because it's really easy to get frustrated with technology. Um, one of the main barriers towards people getting involved in something like live stream or even web developing and using a computer is that it's frustrating. Um, technology, what's well, the first thing that people should remember about live stream technology is, is that there are five different protocols of communication that your live stream has to go through before it actually reaches the web page. So when things are not always working, um, well then people are going to get frustrated. Uh, don't. Uh, being frustrated is the uh, one of the biggest barriers to the continuation of people that live stream, uh, and as well as for computer use. You know, time after time and time again, um, I've had to, I like, uh, I had people uh, where I've actually had to show again and again, and they get frustrated a bit about it. So what I do now is I, I generally get people involved on an interactive level and uh, have them do it for themselves and then just be there and provide support. And that goes for people out there that are online watching as well. And now live streamers are out there that I haven't met yet. Um, uh, I generally make it a point to try and monitor as many different live streams as I can. And if I see something up with your live stream, uh, I am uh, I will help you produce it, which means that um, I'm always willing to help people out if they have technical difficulties, because mm -hmm. um, I've been through most of the te technical difficulties and was able to find a solution for it. Um, so don't don't give up because of the technology. Just remember that it is, it is incredibly sophisticated, and then sometimes things don't always work the way you want them to. Mm -hmm. And just be patient and. Uh, and things will work out. Uh, because if I was, if I let my frustrations get to me, I would not be able to write software or anything. I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be an organizer, period. Yeah. It's too frustrating, you know, uh -huh. you have to try to change people's opinions. Okay, now the reason I became a live streamer, and this is how I got started, was when the Occupy movement first started. Mm -hmm. And I was very much aware of the plans for Occupy, and I know the people that actually came up with the idea. And uh, I had planned on going to New York, but um, as you can see, I was injured. So I decided to stay here in San Francisco. Yeah. And I knew what was going on down at 101 Market, and I was trapped in my wheelchair, and I couldn't get to the damn thing. Right? And I wanted to be there so bad. So the next best thing was, uh, was YouTube. And then uh, I was able to see people getting arrested that first night. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, actually made my way down there. But uh, uh, that's when when live streaming actually I think took off into the world. And I've been around for a while, but it hadn't really taken off. And I was showing it to people, and um, people were like, oh, this is kind of cool, but nobody really kind of like a, developed a, a, a purpose for the application yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the technology existed, but Occupy actually gave purpose to the, to the, of the live streams, which I found purpose to, which is my main reason for being out there and live streaming is to protect the people that are expressing their free speech, mm -hmm. as well as being a witness for peace. Uh, I have uh, been a nonviolent activist for since 1981, mm -hmm. uh, when I had an unfortunate incident happen to me where, uh, well, we don't want to get into it, but it was extraordinarily violent, and there was lots of blood and guts all over the place. And I swore after that. I would never get involved in another situation where I'd have to commit violence on another human being. And uh, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so I became nonviolent. And I, I, I feel, you know, uh, especially with Occupy, being the target of official state repression, right, because we were branded terrorists from the get-go, when everybody knows that we were there, that we were completely nonviolent, and that uh, the only people that were violent were the police department. And this has been upheld in court many times so far. So uh, that's how I, that's how why I wanted, that was my major inspiration for live streaming was to get out there and protect people, you know? Because um, I've always been kind of a, a safety-oriented kind of person, and I really care and value people's health, physical health, and I value p other people's well-being more than I value my own. So uh, I started live streaming because of that, and there was one incident that happened, I believe it was in this past December, and I had been out that night. I was given an, uh, I was speaking at a Democratic club, and which was nearby to Occupy at 101 California or Market Street. So I decided to roll on over there, 
and uh, just because I wanted to go by and see how people were doing. <coughs> so I'm there chatting, you know, kind of enjoying myself, lit up a bowl and, and whatnot, and having a good time. And all of a sudden, all these cops show up. There must have been 200 police, right, doing the lockstep. Next thing I know, we were surrounded. And uh, people were really starting to freak. And I said, don't worry, I have my camera in here. Right, we'll get set up with a live stream. And do not panic. If you have to walk, walk slowly. And please don't give the police any reason to beat your ass. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And the police uh, uh, did, they knew that I was live streaming there. My lawyer had already been notified through the people that were watching. Thank you. Um, so they knew that they couldn't get away with beating people up because I was on the scene. And one by one, 84 people were arrested. And I thought for sure they were going to take me in. And the only time in my life that I've ever surrendered to a police officer was at that time during the live stream when I turned my camera off and said, there you go. And to which he said I was quite shocked. Uh, he said, Mr. Sullivan, live streamer, you know how to get home, don't you? And I said, yeah. And uh, then I, I went across the street and, and live streamed a little bit more and then went home. And I was kind of shocked. And right after that, I went and got my press pass. Because then I realized the police department were well aware of my activities. And uh, they actually, uh, here at least here in the city of San Francisco, that the police department is very supportive of the live streamers. And I've actually pushed them to a to some pretty, you know, because I get, when, when I see people getting pushed around and beaten up, I get real fierce, real fast. You know, and I'm not afraid of anybody. And um, I've actually confronted police like right on the spot with my camera on. And uh, they realized that, that there was no call for violence. So uh, it's real important, at least here in San Francisco. I can't tell you. Um, I know in New York, uh, New York Police Department, uh, if you're acting like a professional journalist, they will respect your live stream. And uh, during Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street, I was there. And I was able to live stream and get right up on the police and actually follow undercover cops around that I knew were involved in some kind of some kind of like nefarious activity which I was right about and was able to capture live streams of them, of them brutalizing people hoping that I would be subpoenaed. Uh, that's another thing about live streaming. When you're doing this, this is a big issue and this is something I'm really going to get into a little bit of detail about. It's about your interactions with the police department. It is completely legal for you to take pictures or a live stream or a video, any police activity, even undercover police activity. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. People out there, do not let yourself be intimidated by the police. Even if they say it's illegal and tell you to stop and try to force you to they, have, they have no right to, no. Now, the only thing that they could uh, possibly arrest you for is if you're actually interfering with them doing their duties. And as long as you stand at a respectful distance, well, then you're well within your right. You're just covered under the First Amendment, and it's been upheld by the courts. So, um, so you're well within your rights as a live streamer. Do not do stupid things like get in the way of the police when they're trying to arrest somebody that's not your place. Uh, you know, it's just like you're only there to be a witness, right? You're not there to stop it, right? But unless, but there has been a few times where um, I've live streamed, and this is not with the police, but um, that I've seen people that were getting violently attacked. And I was able to uh, stop the person who was the attacker through the use of my cell phone camera. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to do that kind of stuff. And also, you have to be willing to get beat up yourself. And I have been attacked by people on the street and been able to defend myself with the, with the camera. So don't under, ever underestimate the power of that little lens. It's, it's more powerful than nuclear weapons. OK? And I don't, I don't really am, and I'm serious. Uh, at the, so, and along with that great power also becomes great responsibility, right? Because uh, now you have a window, you're providing a window in the world that other people can look into. And um, it's important that when you're doing this that you're not motivated by your own self-interests because of your responsibilities. Um, you should always be aware of what other people are doing during your live streams. Be very aware of that. Just don't be content with sitting behind the and looking at the view screen. 
well, you should look at actually interact with the people that you're talking to, right? Uh, first rule of live streaming is never live stream something in, that is meant to be private, like something like really idiotic, like bathrooms. Uh, you know, don't violate other people's privacy when you're doing it. And also, he's always let people know that you're live streaming whenever possible. Uh, so people will have a ch chance to get off of the stream, like they don't want to be photographed, uh, which is another stupid thing because you're constantly being photographed all day long. And all the arguments about that, that when you're in public, about having a right to privacy are completely irrelevant because your picture is everywhere anyway. So, which could be it's a good and bad thing. So, that means like all the time that I smoke a bowl outside <laughs> and being watched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what we're going to get into with security culture. Is is that uh, and I got into a big argument with Black Block about this. Uh, is that you guys know who Black Block is, what Black Block is, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, let me explain. Black Block is a group of anarchists, and everybody knows who anarchists are, I love to assume. A group of anarchists that are engaged in uh, property destruction. Mm -hmm. And using, uh, I wouldn't say they're devoted to violence, but they're using violent tactics. And they uh, masquerade behind us, calling it diversity of tactics, which is like a euphemism for kicking in defenseless clay class windows. And I think it's very childish and juvenile to actually commit violence against other people or property. Um, I don't believe that damaging property is a violent action within itself, but um, they are nonetheless committing an illegal activity and are subject to arrest. And. Uh, that one, there's been occasions when different live streamers have actually been uh, physically attacked by members of the Black Bloc for live streaming, and because uh, they're afraid to have their pictures taken, and uh, which if I was committing an illegal activity, I'd be afraid to have my picture taken too. <laughs> so there's a little thing there, but um, I don't cover Black Bloc because of that. Uh, not because I'm getting attacked, it's just because I don't want to promote their brand of violence. I don't agree with it. There's no need for it, and it doesn't win people over to your cause. It's ethically and morally, I believe, to be uh, reprehensible. And there's just no need for it. It's pointless. And everything is insured. All the stuff that they damage is probably all insured up to the hill. And generally, the people that end up suffering the most for it are poor people. And the actual people that you're supposedly trying to help are actually the poor people that actually have the most damage. So when you're a live streamer, um, it's really important when you pick your subjects, um, unless you have somebody with you. I, uh, also, I would recommend that you not do it alone. Uh, not because it's possible to do it alone, but when you're out at, at public and you're doing a, you're in a, involved in something that's like a demonstration, which can become quite dangerous at times. It's always have better to have somebody watch your back, because a lot of times you're going to be focused in on your live stream and you're not going to be paying attention to what's going on around you. So. Um, if you need, you know, generally somebody at the event, I've always found that whenever I go out to an event, that somebody's always watching my back anyway. But just make sure that somebody's watching you, just to make sure that you're not, somebody just can't roll up on you and, and damage you and your camera and, you know, and uh, I've seen it happen. So, uh, stay away from, uh, live streaming illegal activity. Uh, your work can be subpoenaed by law enforcement. Um, and they can actually put a hold on your Ustream account, from what I understand. Uh, the whole field of the whole field of law versus live stream has really not been played out in the courts yet, and it probably won't be until 10 years after live streaming becomes uh, obsolete. <laughs> That's how fast our court system works, right? It'll be obs this technology will be obsolete before mm -hmm. before uh, before too long anyway. But uh, uh, don't do anything that's going to put you in a path of danger, right? And when you're in private spaces, uh, make sure you ask everybody's permission, or that it's, uh, you know, be uh, be polite about it. You know, uh, uh, it's important to respect other people's privacy. You know, and everybody does have a right to privacy, especially when they're in their own homes. So uh, always ask permission when you're in a private area, uh, and that's real important as well. Uh, one thing I'd like to talk about is the difference between being. Uh, I didn't get. I kind of cut off that subject, but. Uh, between a 
MSM, mainstream media, versus uh, hyperlocal media, which is what live streaming is. is. Mm -hmm. uh, the main difference is, is that we're not burdened by the uh, expectation that we're going to be objective. Uh, there's no need for objectivity with live streaming, generally, because you are transmitting information that doesn't have a filter on. Uh, the only thing that you could possibly filter it in is because the camera doesn't lie, right? So you don't have to sit there worrying about being objective whether you're going to give a fair and balanced report, try to get both sides of the equation in there um, when you have the camera doing all of that for you. The camera is your ethical guide when you're doing it. So uh, this releases you from that ob uh, objectivity that journalists are so fond of. Uh, but it allows you to make commentary and do things about things that you actually care about. Um, and you don't have to sit there and be burdened with that burden. So that, that actually gives you like an extraordinary amount of freedom on the subject matter of what you're talking about. And uh, so that, that releases you from that. And that's the major difference between MSM and live stream, is that you don't have those, that same consideration. But as a journalistic professional myself, um, I would advise that you check out uh, journal, the Journalistic Code of Ethics. And uh, I'm hoping that I can actually have enough time and sit down and actually be able to, to draft some, some uh, ethical things that people should follow. And then, uh, and then if you agree to follow these certain ethics, well, then I'll issue a press pass, which is not an official one, but nonetheless, it'll get you into a lot of places that you wouldn't normally have to get into. Uh, and so the other thing is that uh, you don't really need a huge body of work to become a, a member of the working press. Uh, it's relatively simple to go down to 850 Bryant uh, here in San Francisco, and you talk to a sergeant and Andraychuk, A-N-D-R-A-Y-C-H-U-K. He's a very friendly individual, even though he's a cop. And basically all he's really wanted to look at is if you have a body of work that you can look at. And uh, that's pretty much all he's interested in. Uh, I would say a body of work would consist of about 30 to 40 YouTube videos of live streams that you've done, right? And, uh, and remember that when you're doing your live streams, you know, this, this is, people are watching. And that's so you have to you know try to be professional about it you know don't, I don't know there's uh, you know all the goofy stuff that I've seen that's being live streamed. Fortunately, there isn't that much out there, uh, which is nice. It's refreshing for a change not to see a lot of stupid shit. You know, it's uh, it seems that most live streams, even the commercial ones, are kind of focused in on on reporting object uh, reporting subjects of social interest. Uh, you know, like uh, some of the favorite ones are the, uh, the cameras that are mounted to watch uh, the uh, Falcons down in San Jose, which was a real kind of a big deal. They had a, they had a live stream camera out there watching the, mm -hmm. the, the Falcons uh, mate, and it was pretty interesting. So that's kind of, you know, so that, that's about as silly as it really gets, right? Um, and so getting back to the Occupy thing was that uh, a lot of live streamers found out just how quickly how viral that, that their videos were getting, all their live streams were getting, like Spencer, who's not live streaming currently. Miss, we miss you, Spencer. You need to come back and start live streaming again. Because uh, he was brilliant. I mean, the guy was like, he was there for everything. All the Oakland stuff, all the stuff that went down. I remember one night, he was out there and all his batteries ran out. He's putting out a plea online. Can somebody bring me a battery? Oh. Right? And somebody did. It was so, it was like, so they could keep live streaming, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing the amount of uh, cooperation that you're going to get from people when you're out there live streaming. Because people really do want to have their, you know, regardless of what they say, people really do want to have somebody take an interest in what they're doing, no matter what it is. And when they find that you have an interest in it, it kind of inspires them to work a little bit harder. And uh, that's another reason why I do it, is because I, there's a whole lot of stuff out there that goes on in the world every day of injustices that people will have suffered in silence. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why I live stream is that I think it's very important to cover topics that are not normally covered by mainstream media, because there's an enormous amount of censorship that goes on every day. And not even so much from, uh, it's more of like self-censorship. Uh, because when you're, when you have MSM, you have to advertise to uh, support your live streams or whatever your news media is going to be. So you have to be very careful not to offend your, your, uh, the people that are advertising on your on your network, and uh, so that's like a form of self censorship uh, because you don't want to lose your ad revenue. But uh, since live streaming is so cheap, 
that we don't have to necessarily be worried about that that aspect of it. Uh, that's not really, you know, so that allows you to be more free, right? Um, it's not having to depend on other people to support your, your live streaming, and anybody can do it. And uh, so that's important. So this allows you to cover events, and it, it frees you from the burden of commercialism as well. And you're able to cover all these different things, and that might not seem so important at the time, but later on down the road you'll find out, Jesus, I'm glad that I was there, right? Uh, especially with Occupy was the incubation of a, of a mass national movement, actually worldwide movement. And it was really important to be able to document this, both at the time and also as a record for generations down the road, because uh, you guys are all real young, relatively to me, and Dave, well, I'm, I'm his junior, but uh, see, we still remember the days when there was hundreds of thousands of people that were marching in the streets to end the Vietnam War. And, yeah, of course. I remember when Dr. King got, got assassinated and uh, the riots that we had in Baltimore because of it. And yeah, I grew up in Baltimore. And uh, and the young people of today had never seen me. Well, you know, they haven't, they don't know what it's like and have that experience, you know. And so I was very uh, much gratified by the fact that Occupy was a, had become a worldwide phenomenon. And uh, it was time for the younger generation to take up the fight because I was starting to go to the demonstrations and I was seeing too many, not, not, not against seniors, but there was too many people my age and I wanted to see young people get up and step it up, you know, and especially today with you guys here in college and the enormous expenses that go along with going to college because in my day, uh, generally if anybody, if you wanted to go to college, um, it was easy to do. Um, getting an education wasn't such a problem like it is today and it wasn't the cost was, the cost of colleges has gone up a thousand percent since when I was going to school. When I went to school at Johns Hopkins, it cost thirty-seven hundred fifty dollars a year to go. Four thousand with all your books and and your meals. Today, the same university charges sixty thousand dollars a year. So, for the same, actually worse education. You know, because the education you receive today is not anywhere. Near, I don't believe it to be anywhere near the level of what it was when I was when I was in college at age. Uh, we had so many much courses, many more courses to choose from. And the high school that I went to was basically a junior college. <clears throat> we offered all, you know, we had classes that only colleges would offer. Yeah. So those days are gone, at least for California. Yeah. Is there anybody out there on the, on the chat that has any questions? Um, well, no, uh, Rise PDX is watching, and they were commenting when you were talking about the uh, video where you stopped the cops from you know, where you didn't get arrested and they were aware of your activities, said he would love to see that stream. So. Oh, yeah, it's up there. It's, it's up for you on my Ustream and my YouTube. Right. Right. All my live streams are all, I post them immediately. When I get home, the first thing I do generally is go back in my YouTube. And I look at the YouTubes and I post everything. Uh, so now he's just got to go through 200 no, no, plus it's, videos. No, no, it's pretty available. It's just just, uh, just uh, search for one-on-one -on -one market. Right. And it'll come up. Uh, and that's one of the ones I haven't deleted off of my Ustream. Uh, there's a few other things. Um, I kind of wish everybody would have brought their laptop so I could like demonstrate more about about how to operate your your channel and stream and how to how to um, how to win viewers and how to get viewers to come to your site. Um, Hopefully, we're getting the viewers. cable finally hooked up. Right. So it it turns out the reason why we can't get onto this uh, thing is we have to get the AV department literally has to come down here to get the people next door to open this door to push a button. Well, if I was known that, I would have arranged to have a projector body, but that's okay. Right, well, um, none of us knew that, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to like be able to uh, right. show you guys some, uh, some nuts and bolts about organizing your, your social media and your your, uh, your Ustream account and how to make it work for you, right? Um, the first way to get people to watch your live stream is to watch other live streamers. Right, there's a lot of influential live streamers across the country that, uh, with a little bit of uh, communication, uh, they'll be happy to uh, to uh, retweet your uh, tweets, right? Because you might not have that many followers when you first start out. And uh, one of the ways that you can build up followers is by finding people that have a lot of followers that will retweet your live streams. Speaking of, Connie Crawford says that uh, she wants you to know that you've been up on two channels for Occupy World News for. A while now, so uh, it makes me feel great. 
Great. Okay, so that's another thing too, is that uh, a lot of people are like they're really concerned with that audience count, and that a lot of times when you're being uh, embedded on other people's websites, that I would probably estimate uh, it's anywhere from three to ten times the amount of people that, and up to a hundred times during stuff when I've actually had like when I've saw my actual visitor count go up, and then it, 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 it's not so much as a geometric progression, and so um, you'll be picked up and you'll be embedded in a lot of different sites. Because there's always people out there hungry for content, you know? And you shouldn't have any problems get attracting people to watch your live streams. Um, so network with other, other live streamers, which is real important. And then uh, follow people that you follow on Twitter, and then tweet to them, and they'll, um, they'll be happy to retweet your stuff. You know, all this, you know, it's real simple. And uh, here in San Francisco, um, I, and he's not here today, I didn't really give him uh, too much notice because I didn't know what to expect. But uh, Punk Boy in SF is a very respected uh, person I respect a lot. I've actually live streamed with him on occasion. And he is uh, very active on the social networks. And, uh, and just tell him that I sent you or whatever. You can drop my name. And, uh, and he'll know who he's talking about. And, and he's another anarchist activist who started live streaming. He's another one of my inspirations for continuing to do this. Rise PDX says that they uh, also agree that, again, Rise PDX, in case you don't know, is our Portland live streaming contact who does a lot of the Occupy stuff and has been helpful. One of the nice things about this this platform, and again, I'll just, if you don't mind me jumping no, in a little, um, is that we get to be interactive. So while we're talking here, they're listening at home, they can comment, I can see it, and we can just respond to that in real time. The other nice thing is, if we're on the scene and we don't know, we can't see our own feed, somebody at home, like in this case, Rise PDX, who's been helpful with you know a couple of streams that we've done together and some of my streams as well, uh, he'll be able to say, yeah, listen, your sound's not good, or go over here, or ask this person a question. So you really have this real-time, direct, interactive feed between the viewer, the you know streamer, the producer, do some members helping out, something like that. So, yeah, he's basically saying, again, that during a big action, you're going to have a lot more than the number of viewers here. So right now, we don't have that many viewers on this channel. We've only got 12, according to the data that I'm seeing. But that could mean that there's another 20 or 50 or more on these other channels that we've been rebroadcast on. That's part of it. Yeah, so you never know exactly how many people you've got. The only difference is the viewers that are actually on your Ustream page are the ones who are going to be able to join in and comment on right. the social stream. This doesn't pick up on the embeddeds. Right. Now, Livestream does that. That is one difference. If you have an embedded code on Livestream, they can pick up your viewership from other websites. But uh, there's still problems with Livestream. They're not been sold out yet. Uh, well, one thing I've noticed now, uh, like Mayday, uh, on Mayday, if you went to YouTube, there was you could get uh, simultaneously live streams from Seattle, New York City, uh, Oakland, all on one page. Yeah. And on one page, and you just click on right to Seattle. There, 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 was, there was chaos going on in the streets. Bang! You can see what happened, and so you can move from one to another. Is that That's right? That's what I did all day. Yeah. 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 All day. Different long. live streams. Yeah. Different live streams. Uh, yeah. Seattle was off the hook that day. Police were really brutal. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, a new police chief is going to be on his way out because of what happened that day there. Right? Yeah. It was a brand new police chief, and that's pretty much why the police reacted that way because they weren't, didn't receive sufficient training. Generally when the police, this is in Seattle, generally you're going to find with the police that the ones that are the most violent are the ones with the least amount of training. Uh, veteran police officers rarely ever you know, incite violence. Uh, they usually just call out their coordinates. How you doing? Um, so if uh, someone was to follow you on Ustream, like what, okay, you log on to the uh, Yeah, log on to the account mm -hmm. and on Ustream. Um, there's a little, uh, you can actually go from the, the embedded code on my activist stream page and just click on the on the live stream and that will take you to the Ustream channel. Okay. Okay, now on the Ustream channel, there is a little button at the top of the, right above the, the monitor, or right above the screen, that says follow. So you just click that once. Okay. And uh, what that allows is whenever you go up and you have a live stream, when it goes up, that it sends out an email to all the people that follow you and let them know that you're online. Okay. Right? And it's a very good notification system. Um, I generally find it to be effective. I find that Twitter is more effective for attracting viewers. Uh, and like I say, when you, before you go out to something and to really promote it, it's a good idea to retweet it about three or four times. 
Uh, like on my way here today, um, when I got here, I tweeted, and then I tweeted with a picture of the building so people would know where to go. Um, nice. you know, whether or not it helps anybody out, it's still something that Chet's put out there. Um, and that way, because people are not going to automatically be able to go to your channel the instant that you go onto your live stream. It's not like television where there's a set schedule, mm -hmm. um, unless you set one for yourself. Uh, so consequently, a lot of people are not going to know when you're going to be able to go on live stream. So that's why you have to tweet. And pre-tweeting gets people a little more excited about it. And uh, so by the time that you're online, you're already set up with a few viewers, and you can start doing your thing. And uh, this is the uh, thing of why I prefer Ustream to all the others, is, is that on Ustream, you can constantly tweet all the time and post to your Facebook page consistently. Yes. And um, it's a good idea when you're doing a live stream to tweet about every five minutes, continuously. Um, also, uh, this also goes in with that, is that when you're providing context for viewers, like explaining what's going on, it's always, always a good idea to give out the URL of the, of the website that you're, that you're streaming out of. Also, to repeat the information. <coughs> Because you have new viewers that are constantly coming online, and you want to be able to give them an update about what's going on, <coughs> right? And always make sure that you include your URL, which is ustre.am slash capital N, little h, little u, capital D. Or you can go to activiststream.com to pick up this live stream. So it's just important to, to do that every once in a while. And if you would, uh, hit the tweet. Yeah, I've been doing it regularly, so, yeah. And once you download the Ustream, which I have down now, right. finally got it done, what, what do you do from there? Well, you should be able to sign up for an account. <laughs> okay, I signed in with my Gmail account. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, and then what do I do? Uh, you should be ready to go. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we're going to get back to the social networking thing. Um, and it's a good idea to, to start building up your social network. Um, on Twitter, I found the best way to attract followers, uh, besides following people that have lots of followers, is to be consistent. Right? It's important when you're doing live streams. Um, I believe to be it's, a, it's important as a journalist and as, as a live streamer to be, to show, number one, show up on time when you're coming for something. If you announce to people that you're going to be on site at 2 o'clock, get your live stream and get it up and running, regardless if there's anything to go on. And that's just mainly out of respect for your viewers, and so you don't waste your time. You know, because a lot of people are uh, expecting you to be on, you know, to be online and working, and so if you're not consistent, and you're on time. Other people are just going to say, "Well, you know, this is kind of a waste of my time. What do I want to come back for?" Right? And it's real important to be aware of that. Uh, uh, a fast and hard internet rule is is that if people leave your site for negative reasons, they generally won't come back. So Speaking of people leaving your site, you have now 15 viewers on your channel. We've got word for that you've got 30 more viewers from the Occupy World News Network and 15 on GR, according to Rise PDX. I'm not sure what GR is. So, so yeah, again, you're getting about three times your viewers. Yeah. Also, there's probably a, a Global Rev. I'll probably be up with that pretty soon, too. Yeah. Um, oh, Global Rev. GR has got to be Global Rev. Global yeah. Rev, yeah. So, yeah, you've got about... Uh, Another 45 viewers on top of the 15. Hey, where's my got Spanish there? curriculum, Ed Blad? <laughs> uh, yeah. I know you said you post like consistently about like five times. Do you recommend on Twitter? But do you recommend doing that on Facebook as well? Yeah, I hook up both accounts together. Okay. Right. And um, one of the nice things about uh, living in the age of information is is that um, as you see, I've, like, my years, early years as a journalist, we were limited by our mediums, and so uh, an internet you have as much space as you need. Right, and uh, whereas in the old days, that's why there was a need for copy editors and things like that, because you only had a certain amount of space, and you were limited by hard copy, and you were limited by the amount of time that you could do something. And so now, nowadays, you're not limited by that at all. So you can you can tweet out as much as you want, you know, and, and people uh, and don't feel like you're being intrusive on other people because people make a choice to register Facebook accounts and have Twitter accounts, and if they don't want to follow you, they don't have to, right? And you're not going to lose people that way. And generally, I found that the more you tweet, the more followers you have. And that's, that's a real good thing. Keep consistent about it. Um, and then try to like be consistent about your tweets about what they're about. right? And if you want to be a live streamer and you're doing live streaming, 
Well, then start tweeting out about other actions that go on. Right? It's a re real easy to find out about online if you want to be a, um, a political live streamer. That follow some of the political websites, like uh, one of the biggest resources here in the Bay Area and around the world, actually, IndieMedia.org. Uh, in, the, in the Bay Area, uh, they have local. Uh, they were one of the first uh, advocates of citizen journalism, and it's uh, basically an anti-authoritarian organization, an anarchist, that was set up to allow people to post news stories on the website. And they have a wonderful calendar on it, and generally has anything that's like going on in the Bay Area that's that's involved in social justice. So that's a good calendar to check out. IndieBay.org here in the Bay Area, and then IndieMedia.org uh, worldwide. Um, and they actually, I worked for them for a while, and I still post to them regularly. Which one is for the Bay Area? IndieBay, I-N-D-Y-B-A-Y dot org. Um, so it's good to stick with that site too. And that's another site that will allow you uh, to post unlimited video as well. So you can, you can use them for an archive as well. Um, the only reason I generally use YouTube is because it's, it's convenient. Uh, you don't have to actually go to the URL. It doesn't write from your phone. Um, and write from the Ustream website. I have a lot of issues with YouTube at the current time. Um, I believe that um, YouTube is actually uh, completely anal about copyright. Uh, completely anal. And that they're a little too uptight. And I've had some issues here on campus with copyrights. And we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, so be consistent with your social media. Try and check it out every day. Um, uh, one thing about me when I was injured a few years ago was that social media became my. I wasn't always get. I wouldn't have. I wasn't always get somebody to visit me. You know, because I couldn't get out of the house, and so social media was a way I could communicate with people, and actually in real time, and uh, and. I've got, I don't know about all together, I haven't really counted, I've got thousands of people, thousands. It's enough to, enough to fill up this campus. So uh, keep up with your, with it, it's real bit quick, and once you, once you start doing it regularly, you will go viral, and be prepared for that. Because that's the biggest challenge you're going to face once you, after you become Elijah. First challenge is learning how to deal with your frustration, and then once you've worked out the technical difficulties, and learn how to do the basics, then the next thing you're going to be challenged with, there's, there's a lot more challenges that are ahead. Uh, and also, when you're a live streamer and you start to build up a following, be very much aware that you're a public figure, um, that people are watching you, including the police department, and that uh, um, conduct yourself accordingly. And be aware that you're going to attract a whole lot of people that you don't know, and some of those people, unfortunately, are going to be trolls. And a troll is somebody Basically, who is somebody who is looking for attention? Uh, and they're doing this through negativity. And as long as you acknowledge them without giving into their neg negativity, I've found that I've been able to successfully deal with trolls. Um, I have not, and I can actually say that I have, have no actual trolls. So, um, I don't attract that kind of. I generally don't attract that kind of energy anyway. Um, I generally don't have people hating on me, but occasionally I do. And I usually deal with it forcefully. And uh, I'm not afraid to confront anybody um, when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, and sometimes you have to. And it's important to confront people, but never let yourself fall into their mindset. Because the moment you start arguing with them, because basically what a troll is trying to do is engage you and make you waste your time. Right? And as everybody knows, time is the most important resource you have, just about. So they're making you, you know, they get you to waste your time. And one day, just recently, I got so angry, and I was just like, I couldn't, I actually had to cancel out on the live stream I was so angry, when I wished I'd have been there. Because I hate missing stuff that I'm, that I'm scheduled for, you know. So don't let people like that suck your energy, because they're vampires. And all they want to do is suck your energy, right? So, uh, uh, well, you know, let the trolls do their trolling. Um, if you're worried about it, keep a moderator on your Ustream account. And, uh, and to monitor it. And if you're, uh, like I keep saying again, make sure that you integrate yourself with the live stream community uh, because uh, we do have a somewhat of a solidarity that we've been establishing. And uh, that's one of the things that I work on most is establishing solidarity with other live streamers and letting them know that somebody out there is watching to help them. Right? And uh, yeah. if you get a Twitter account for the new stream, which is pretty much it, you know. 
You can use a, on Twitter, you can use an alias. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a valid uh, email account. Exactly. And you can do the same thing with, with, with Facebook. But to be honest with you, uh, I would use my real name. Okay. Unless you're worried about it. Yeah. Are you on Facebook as well? Yeah. yeah. Clark Sullivan on Facebook. Okay. Um, and again, if you're, uh, if you'd like to contact me personally, which I'm always love, I love when people, I love it, you know. I'm open, this is what I'm devoted to. Um, I'm devoted to helping you guys. You know, if you have technical issues, people out there online, if you have technical issues, do not hesitate to call me up. You can call me up during the day. If I pick up the phone, that means I'm more than willing to talk with you. Um, when I don't pick up the phone, that means I'm usually coding, and I'm engaged in some kind of intense concentration, and I can't, can't be disturbed. But, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email is, free, uh, just Google me at Freeman Sullivan. Um, I have accounts established in all kinds of crap. Matter of fact, I sometimes go out and just look for new accounts to set up on a Freeman Sullivan. Uh, right? You say Freeman Sullivan? Freeman Sullivan. At what? At any. Email? Yep. Any? Gmail, Yahoo. Oh. Right, I have all those accounts. I just keep them, I keep them all <laughs> networked together. So uh, that's another thing as a live streamer is try to establish a brand for yourself. You know, it's not something that's commercial. Uh -huh. You know, like trying to you know market yourself as a box of Cheerios. <laughs> but uh, it helps to have people, it helps to aid in people identifying you. Right, so that and you will build up a following. And if you have a brand that you're sticking with, well, then people know where to go. And that way, they don't always have to keep a bookmark on bookmark on your page, um, and they can just know automatically where to go. So when, after you establish a brand, and that also helps with your reputation, especially with people like the police department and other institutions, like City College here, and things like that. And they know if you have a brand that you've established for yourself, that's what your reputation is based upon. You know, and uh, don't get so like wrapped up, that's another thing about trolling and stuff like that. Don't get so wrapped up in your own reputation that you can't take criticism for other, other people. Because even if trolls are trying to waste your time, there is some validity to some of the things that they happen to say. Oh. Right? And if they can see it, well then your followers, your, your viewers are also going to be able to see that as well. So, uh, uh, you know, be aware of that. But don't be so hooked into your reputation. And the only reason why you want to keep a brand is just to, it's just to provide a common place where people can find you. Uh, that's why I use Freeman Sullivan and uh, Activist Street. Right, those are two. I just started the Activist Street, um, and I'm actually going to move all my crap over to that pretty soon, as soon as I ever release it. Up. Yeah, so, Kieran, right now, I have a lot of experience regarding outreach on social media, not just in the San Francisco uh, City College students community. So, I've been using uh, Facebook for the Associated Students Council page, uh, Twitter, blog, and also a Google Document newsletter that's sent out to 85,000 students. And my question is, when it's converted to a Google document, my newsletter, could I post the live stream video there, or would I just have to provide the link? Do you know that would be uh, Google they have a thing called Google Hangout. Which one, which one is that? Called Google Hangout. Google Hangout. And I haven't really tried it. Um, if you're going to do something like that, I would more, if you're going to do a live stream and send a live stream out like that, I would recommend that you check into the new recently patented BitTorrent. Go to BitTorrent.com. They just released a... Uh, BitTorrent? Yeah, BitTorrent. Okay. Uh, that's another thing uh, I didn't mention was is that uh, here in the near future, my app will also be P2P integrated. Which P2P? Peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. Okay. You know, where people download torrents. It's like we are the pirates of the internet, even though we're not. Um, that uh, this technology, what happens is the more people that watch your, uh, watch your live stream, the clearer it gets and the better the resolution and the faster the, the uploads and download speeds are. Mm. So, because you're sharing with all the other people that are watching the show, instead of coming from a centralized network, right, that's coming just in one direction, you're getting it from. So. Would it require to download those torrents? Um, you just have to register for, uh, for BitTorrent or the other one that you're talking about. They're not pirated material, you know. As long as you're not downloading, like, songs and yeah. movies and stuff, you'll, you should be okay. It's just like if you... Well, BitTorrent, the uh, software that they're offering on their website uh, for live streaming is not, uh, is not uh, you don't have to worry, worry about copyright or crap like that. It's just available on their site. So I'd recommend that one as a good one. I've had good results with that. Um, you know, because you can live stream off of your laptop just as well as, or your iPad, just as well as you can live stream off of your phone. Right? Anything that has a camera and a mic. Uh, that's another thing, too, uh, I didn't bring up about equipment. 
Um, sometimes it's a good idea to have a mic that you can plug right into your, your cell, a USB mic. Uh, because, um, well, we'll get into the technical things about it. You know, you know, like, um, let's just keep going where we're going with social networks. Uh, and Facebook is another important resource. And Facebook will allow you to uh, post your videos to their site, videos of your live stream. So that's another important consideration. Um, and try to get every, you know, like, you know, don't be afraid to put it out in as many places as you can. Uh, it never hurts to have backups of backups of backups of anything. Um, so keep all your stuff backed up. You know, make copies of copies. Because um, you never know, the, you never know when you're going to lose your computer or your phone. And uh, and then having backups really makes your life a lot easier. So that's what I know you're going to recommend is backup all your stuff. Um, and that goes for your phone as well. If you can afford it, keep it back up on your phone. Can you just back it up on a flash drive as well as to uh, well, that, uh, Ustream doesn't offer that capability. Okay. Um, uh, BAM user does, that, however. BAM user? Yeah, B-A-M-B, B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R. BAM user. Dot com. The problem with BAM option. user is, is that if your live stream gets interrupted, you lose all that video. That's why I generally don't use it. Because I want, as I'm documenting things, even though it's a better app and it has better resolution and things like that, um, if you're, you do lose your live stream, which happens all the time, um, you lose a copy of that, that, and you won't have it available to you. So, whereas uh, Ustream does it automatically, so if your camera does get dropped, or whatever, something happens, uh, your bandwidth, your signal goes out, or whatever, um, then it is archived. But, now we're missing all the point. I know I've been talking in the uh, past tense about live streaming. Um, let's get into the present tense, because that's what live stream is. Um, is the important thing. And this is the reason I do it. Another reason why I do it, and why I got so excited about this technology, is the interactivity involved in it. Uh, personally, I'm not really interested in making videos that are going to be viewed at a later date. Uh, I really have no real interest in that. There's people that are much better at that than I am. So I'll leave it to them. <laughs> uh, I'm interested in capturing the moment and being there at the moment something happens. Uh, there's an enormous amount of like power that's associated with that, um, it's very, as well as being empowered. And another reason why we go out and live stream, at least people like me, is that I'm there to empower people in their homes and people that are connected remotely. Um, I get like tonight, I have a request to do a live stream because uh, there's a distance involved, and they would like to be, they would like to know what's going on here in San Francisco for their group or where they are. So uh, I'm going to do that, you know, tonight. Um, so you're there. Part of the function of there is to empower people that are watching. And the way that we empower them is by providing um, nice, clear pictures. And then the other way is that we have chat and commentary. And um, I've seen a lot of live streamers. They sit there and they just they don't say anything. And they just show pictures of what they're doing, which is fine. But if I wanted to do that, well then why don't they just set up a webcam and just keep your mouth shut? To me that's not a live stream. I believe that a live stream is that when you're engaging the audience because it's live. That's the reason why I love this technology. Is that people can tweet to you or log on to your social stream and are able to comment with you. Comment and it's available on your on your screen of your cell phone and you can see them commenting and you can talk to them. And we were talking about how you can like your audience will help you out with your audio visual on a lot of occasions. Well, to me, the most important thing are those people that bother to log in and make a comment. Because that doesn't happen. That happens with maybe one out of every 20 people that are going to be watching your live stream. So uh, those people that are, are you're engaging in chat are probably the most important aspect of once you've gotten all the other areas out of the way and your live stream is going good, your subject material is happening. Is that then you can pay attention to those little, those people that are chatting with you, and uh, that's extraordinarily empowering. Um, I was watching a late a live stream. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it was in the spring, and there were about five kids out there protesting in Cleveland, and all of a sudden the police show up, and they're live streaming it, and I can't remember what I told them to do. Uh, I wish I had. I wish I had made a recording of that. I can't remember what I told them to do, but I advised them on how to deal with the police. And first of all, as I asked them, I told them, I said, unless the police have a warrant for your arrest, they're not entitled to start searching you. 
right? They can't take your camera. They can't do that. So number one, don't ask them first if you're if you're uh, uh, going to be taken into custody and uh, why? Because the police have to tell you. And uh, if not, everything goes out the window for them, right? So and I think I advised them along those lines, and they were able to successfully negotiate with the police department and not get arrested. And uh, I can't remember, Occupy Cleveland, but it was somebody there with Occupy. Anyway, we had this nice little conversation, and I became friends with them, and uh, by virtue of that. So uh, remember, those people that are watching, they're your biggest ally when you're out there live streaming, um, even bigger than the person that's watching your back, uh, because those are the ones that are actually going to bring your message out into the world, and they're going to be the ones that are going to be taking home what you have to say and what you're, and what you're live streaming about. So, um, you know, when people are...